Hey YouTube, today I'm going to be showing you how the tracking system actually works. Now if you're just checking out Thinking of Pi for the first time, I'm working on a high altitude balloon project using Raspberry Pi and Adrenos. So last week I showed you how to make the tracking system, today I'm going to be showing you how it works. We've got everything hooked up here. Um, I've got an antenna attached. Always, always, always make sure you have an antenna attached if you're doing anything with radio. Now, if you're messing around with this on the breadboard, that's fine. This is a solution I came up with for breadboards. We've got an SMA connector soldered to this uh, prototyping board. It's got these connectors on the end here so that you can put side mounted components on there. And the SMA connectors on there with three wires that are just bridged over right there so that we can send the signal to the antenna right there. The data pin is yellow and the two white ones are the RF ground. So that worked perfectly for me on the breadboard. If you don't use an antenna and you try sending radio signals, you will fry your transmitter. So let's go ahead and remove the GPS module here. We want to remove it because the GPS here uses the serial pin on the Adreno and it will hog the serial connection and we won't be able to program it. I do have the GPS antenna over here. We'll be using that later. And I will also be using this guy. Um, this is a SDR radio or software defined radio. This is used for um, receiving the radio signal on the computer. I'll be showing you how to do that with Windows 10 and a few different pieces of software that actually work just great on Windows 10. So let's head over to the computer and we'll take a look at the code for the tracking system. We'll make some changes to it, upload it, and then I'll show you how it all works. All right, so this is the Trackwino uh, GitHub page. I'll put a link to this in the description. You can check this out, read all about it, check out all the details that this thing is capable of. But we're interested in downloading it here. I've already done this. We download it as a zip and we get all of our files right here. We're just interested in looking at this one right here. That's going to open all of the files so we can take a look at all the code. I would not be one to explain how all of this works. I'm not too familiar with Adreno and this is some pretty advanced code so it's not really my cup of tea. But what we want to look at is the config file right here and this is where we're going to be making some changes there's lots of comments in here so it's really easy to use I just don't understand it but that's not important it doesn't matter how it works it just matters that it does work right so right here we need to make sure we put our call sign in there mine is KE0TZM if you don't have a call sign don't be doing this Right here, we're going to put our SSID. This identifies what type of object it is. There are literally thousands of SSIDs you can use, but they put some of the common ones right here. Mine is a balloon, so that's an 11. Um, some of this other stuff we don't need to change. This was in here by default as the destination call sign. We do want to pay attention to the path. Um, by default, this was pathless. These two lines were commented out. I did have to uncomment those and put wide 2 one Otherwise, the software on the computer is not going to recognize the signal when it comes in. Right here, we can put a comment. That'll come through with the transmission. And mine just says testing for now. Uh, a lot of this other stuff doesn't need to be touched. The GPS baud rate, that is the baud rate of the GPS signal, not the radio transmission or the USB connection. That just pertains to the GPS signal. We've got some other settings down here for what's hooked up to what. We've got the audio pin, that's on pin 3 on the Adreno. Um, this right here for pre-emphasis, that has to do with um, the actual radio signal. I set it to a 1, it seems to work. Uh, PTT is push to talk. That is also the enable pin on the 
um, transmission module, the radio transmitter. Um, some most of this other stuff is pretty irrelevant. We've got stuff in here for the temperature sensors that this was written for. I'm not touching it. I'm not using those sensors. It doesn't matter. Um, I don't have the voltage divider, so that doesn't matter. No buzzer. None of this stuff really matters. Down here at the bottom, we have some debugging options. I'll get into that a little bit more later. But I do like to have these um, these turned on. The debug GPS is going to output the GPS data to the serial monitor. And then we have the um, debug AX25. AX25 is the format for the data transmission. I like to look at that sentence, too, in the serial monitor when I'm using it. So I have that turned on as well. So after all those changes are made, we just hit this button here to upload. It's going to compile it and upload it to the Adreno. There it goes. All right, we're done uploading. So now what I want to do is unplug it. And we're going to take our GPS module and put that back in here. All right, I'm going to power this over USB. It's not going to output the full 300 milliwatts, but it's going to work well enough for demonstration purposes here. We've got the GPS connect antenna connected, and GPS is connected to the module there, so everything should work. Now, before I turn this on, I want to talk about the software for a minute. The first thing that we need to do is open up our sound preferences. And under recording, you want to make sure stereo mix is enabled. This acts as a virtual sound cable that will take the output from the uh, receiver, that SDR thing that I showed you earlier, and it digitally inputs it so that our radio software can understand it and the, the tracking software understands it and everything just works the way it's supposed to work. So let's go ahead and open up. Oh boy. We want to start with Packet Engine here. Code the radio signal. It has a module here that, or a, a macro that opens up all my other software. But this is Packet Engine. It doesn't really have any settings that need to be changed. It works pretty well by itself. Most of the software is actually designed for Windows 95, I think, but it actually works very well on Windows 10. I'll put links to all the software in the description too, so if you want to check that out. Um, the other piece of software is APRS IS32. This is the mapping software. Packet Engine talks to APRS IS32 and actually takes the GPS data, puts it on a map. We'll see all of that in a minute here. Now, the last piece of software here is SDR Console. There are a lot of different SDR softwares out there. This is the one that seems to work best for my purposes. It has a lot of different features, a lot of different settings. You can do just about anything with you want, anything you want with it. And all the software is free. So if this is your thing with radio, definitely check it out. So when this boots up, um, it'll give you the option here to connect to that SDR dongle. And we're just going to hit start. And if you've got this set to anything else, um, right now it's on FMY data so it filters out all the static. I also have the squelch enabled here, and that will allow us to just hear the data when it comes through. Now I'm going to plug in the Adreno, and you'll see the red light there on the GPS. That red light indicates that it's on, but it's not connected. When that light starts flashing, you've got about a minute until it gets its first uh, transmission. 
while it's connecting to the GPS, I want to open, I believe it's this one. This is the GPS software. It has a serial monitor on it so we can see all the data that comes through the GPS. It will also show us the location of all the satellites that it's connected to. This is pretty neat software. Um, this was also free. Um, I believe the link to that software was on Spark Fund's website. They have a lot of good documentation on the GPS module. So I'll put a link to the GPS software in the description as well. We should be getting a lock on the GPS satellites here in a minute. Okay, we have GPS signal acquisition. And we should be getting our first transmission in just a moment here. There it goes. Sounds kind of like a fax machine, but that's what data sounds like when it's modulated over the radio waves. Now, if we go over here and look at Packet Engine, we can see the call sign, the SSID. This is what's called um, the AX25 sentence. And then we also have the uh, GPS coordinates over here. This is in what's called NMEA format. Um, it's kind of difficult to understand if you don't know what you're looking at, but the software takes care of all that and decodes it for us. Um, right here, it will also show the altitude. Um, I've noticed that it usually takes about 20 minutes for it to actually get an accurate altitude reading. Um, this would also show the temperature sensors right here. Um, that's temperature inside, temperature external, um, and then the voltage, but I'm not using any of those. Those mean nothing to me. And then there's our um, APRS comment that I showed you a moment ago. Now, Packet Engine is then connected to the APRS IS32 right here, and it puts down the map. It's not 100% accurate at the moment, but it'll get more accurate as time goes on and it gets a better lock on the satellites. Here we go. We can see that we've got four satellites with good signals. We can see the locations of the satellites here on the map. And right over here, we can see our serial monitor. And these are those NMEA sentences. I'm actually going to be using the NM NMEA sentences to um, connect, or I'm going to be texting those to myself using uh, a USB, a cellular USB modem. I'll be showing you that next week. And I'm going to be taking those GPS sentences, parsing the location data, and then sending a text using the Raspberry Pi. So make sure you subscribe so you can check that out next week. Um, I'd love to read your guys' comments below. So let me know what you think. Any thoughts, comments, concerns? I love reading comments. Um, also, make sure you check out Thinking of Pi on uh, Patreon. If you want to support Thinking of Pi, I would greatly appreciate it. But I think that's all I've got for today, and I will talk to you next week. Thanks.